We're here with Henry Capono, who's, you know, written and wrote 30 albums, Grammy nominated in 2006 for The Wild Hawaiian, and you've been doing music for about 27 years now. Longer than that, probably. Yeah, longer than that. Yeah. I've been at Duke's for 27 years. Yeah. I've been playing for 100 years. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you? I'm awesome. It's a good day. Yeah. Every day is a good day. So let's kind of go back, you know, in your career. Okay. Um, when was the realization that you realized music was going to be your future? After I went on tour with, uh, took a six-week tour to Asia and ended up there for two years. Mm -hmm. That's what I realized that was my, uh, that was what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I made, uh, played for the troops, made the troops feel good. And then I realized that's what I, you know, that was my calling. So, um. Yeah, so I just stuck with music. Football was actually, I wanted to be a professional football player. I was, I was good at what I did. You know, I was, I was, I was passionate about things that I, I did. You know, otherwise I didn't do it. I had no joy in it. But uh, music just kind of um, was my calling. And I, I guess I had to go to the school of hard knocks to figure that one out. You know, right. into a, a war zone lived off of almost nothing and learned how to survive. So it was a big lesson for me. Now, what do you enjoy about music? I enjoy everything about it. As long as it's positive and it makes people feel good and it makes me feel good. And, and I can, um, people, I can, I can tell this story in, in three minutes, four minutes and something that's interesting and good and people kind of like take it in and I go wow you know that's pretty cool and they kind of like uh, identify with it in their own way you know so that's what I love about it. I love just what it does you know, it's the universal language and and for me I want to I want to be able I want people to be able to understand what I'm about, you know, what my music is about. So, I like it all positive. You know, I don't like to promote negative things. There's enough negativity around, so, so I keep it all positive. Now, when you were growing up, uh, you know, who were some of your inspirations in music? Like, what artists? Well, my biggest one was uh, locally was Kui Lee. Um, Don Ho was, you know, I, I watched him a lot, learned a lot from him. But the uh, mainland would be James Taylor, Jimi Hendrix, um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Crosby, Still Nash and Young, um, you know, Led Zeppelin. You know, there's so many great musicians. I mean, everybody had their own identity. You know, nowadays I can't tell who's who. You know, all, all the music sounds the same. But, but back then, everybody had their own style of music, and it was a great, great place to 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 get all this this information, you know, music information. So those were basically my, you know, I loved um, uh, Elvis Presley, and I liked uh, Frank Sinatra. Um, I listened to everything, you know. If it caught my ear, then I listened to it. If it didn't, then I switch. Now, what inspires you to music, you know, and to write? Everything. You know, if, if, if I hear somebody say something a certain way, that inspires me to write a song. If I um, see somebody doing something and, and it uh, touches my heart, and I, I kind of write about it. Um, if I'm, I'm just sitting around and, and thinking, I might say one word or two words, and and I'll write about it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, one or two words has a whole story to it. So, or I can make a whole story out of it. So. But everything, you know, for me, it, it's all about listening. You know, I listen to the world and what is what it says to me, and then I take it in and and. Well, now maybe I'm supposed to write a song for it or about it or something. Right. So, you know, I'm real grateful that I have that talent and that creativity to 
to um, talk to people through my music. You know, this, I, I'm better at talking on stage through my music than I am uh, uh, just talking, you know. Although I've gotten pretty good from what my manager or my wife says. <laughs> right. What would be your memorable experiences with music? Playing with Cecilio, you know, that was a great experience. Before that was playing in, for the troops because that made, that really opened my eyes to, to war. I mean, what is, what is it all for, you know? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I learned about people, you know? I learned about, um, uh, you know, people who were fighting for us and, and why they were there. I, I was a civilian. And I, I didn't have a gun, but I, I could still watch and listen. And I made a lot of friends in the military doing that thing. And then when I came home, you know, all I did over there was play guitar, sing, play guitar, play in the band. The band was called Papa Lolo. And then um, when I came home, I played around. You know, I got pretty good um, at what I was doing. So I played, it was easy for me to get a gig in town. Um, but then I met um, Cecilio through a friend of mine, a good dear friend. And he said, oh, man, maybe you guys will sound good together. I said, oh, yeah, I heard him before. Um, I'd love to meet him. So he put it, he made it happen, we got together. And after the third song, we just went, looked at each other going, well, it sounded like we played together before in another time zone or something. But yeah, and that just happened. And then we played for three months to nobody but the bartender and the uh, one waitress. And then we opened up for Frank Zappa. That was a big turning point. Played our, did our 15 minutes and then we, people were just screaming and wanted another song. And, and we were, you know, packed up, ready to go to work, back to work. And uh, Frank Zappa came out and says, hey man, get back out there. They want you guys, and you know, Opening acts never do that, mm -hmm. you know. Frank Zappa was just a special, a special guy. You know, I've gotten to know more about him as I as I looked at in his history and documented and saw what a genius he was. So we went back, we played another song, and by the time we got back to our club, um, the Rainbow Villa, it was packed. I mean, there were people outside uh, in line a line around the block to get in and you know three months before there was nobody and that was just a big turning point for us and from that day on every day every night was packed until um lines were out there till one o'clock one thirty. and you know that doesn't happen anymore you know people used to come i mean the same guys would come every night you know, and 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 uh, request the same songs so we got really good and then um, our manager at the time, Bill Thompson, felt that we should, you know, spread and go beyond the reef. And he knew, um, he knew a guy in Columbia Records, an A and R person, and he got him to the club when when there was nobody, and um, name was Terry Powell, and to listen to us. And Terry had a dinner date with some friends, and he said, "Well, I can come for a little bit and and listen." You know, um, he came in and stayed the whole night. He was just uh, mesmerized. You know, that two guys and nobody in the in the room could keep him there. So he helped us um, uh, get lined us up for the audition for Columbia Records, and we were in San Francisco at the time at a place called the Iron Works, and and then we flew down to L.A. to audition for all the record companies, and and we had three record companies that were that were interested. And Columbia is the one that got the bid, and we went there. Um, but, you know, had we known uh, then, we wouldn't have given so much away, you know. But, you know, you want to be with a, a big company, you got to give, you know, <laughs> as well as, as take. But I don't think we took so much from them. But anyway, you know, it was a great experience to be able to, a world number one uh, record company in the world and um so c and i um just kept writing 
My first three albums were really big albums here in Hawaii and everywhere. Um, but by the time we, by the time we was going for our fourth um, record, uh, management kind of switched around. It's um, these this other group that was uh, was supporting us financially thought they they could do it. Didn't work out that way, and so they pissed off the record company. <laughs> Record company blackballed us, and so we had to start from scratch again. So, but thank God the records are good enough that it kept us alive. You know, and we could either do something with it or, or not. And, and it was great music; people loved it, so we stuck with it. You mentioned Millville experiences. You mentioned how you and Cecilia and Capone got together. You guys written uh, good times together, uh, friends, and a lot of good songs. Um, would say both of those songs would be one of your favorites. Yeah, I think it's it's everybody's favorites, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, graduations, yeah, either it's either friends or good times, you know. Um, and every time we play those songs, it just kind of like lights people up. You know? mm -hmm. So, but we have written some great songs, you know. I mean, you know, we we didn't we were just writing, we were just having fun. And I think that's what it was about, you know, fun. Because uh, that's the energy we put into our music. Mm -hmm. And people were, were gravitating to it. So It was good stuff, mm -hmm. really good stuff. You guys have been around for years, you know. You guys have performed all over the world. Um, a reunion tour, possibly? Uh, you know, like they say, never say never. And, you know, the, the what... You know the whole situation that happened with him is 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 not favorable to some people. In fact, I think most people. I, I was I was um, I was kind of uh, hurt by that that whole thing. Um, I think more emotionally and spiritually. But you know, shit happens, and you move on, or you don't you know but you know you, you never know he's he's still around he's uh here he's um in guam he's a dj in guam and um i think maybe maybe down the road if everything's mended and and right with with people you know it might happen but you know i'm looking i'm not counting on it right now right now i'm counting on Keeping my uh, my music going and and um, continue the the fun. You play baseball, but you've had a love of football as well. Uh, you played at UH. Great experience playing football as a defensive back. Yeah, I had I had great coaches. You know, coaches really make a big difference. You know, uh, my line coach was uh, Larry Price. Our head coach was uh, Dave Holmes. Um, I was more, uh, I more gravitated more to Larry Price because uh, uh, he was really my coach. And then in high school at Punahou, I played football. And the man, uh, Charlie Ane, was like my second father. You know, he was just taught me so much and he was such an inspiration um, to me. You know, he played pro ball, he was a big guy, and, you know, he always called us girls, you know, <laughs> come on girls. <laughs> and, um, but I think those guys, Price and, and Ane really motivated me um, uh, as a, as a um, in life, you know. They taught me more about life than through football than I, I I knew at the time or would ever know. Mm -hmm. And by that, by them teaching me that, I got to understand life better. Mm -hmm. So I thank them for that. Mm -hmm. But I love football, and that was kind of an odd. Like I wanted to be a professional football player. But the man upstairs had different... Uh, a different path for me so oh, maybe you should try this you probably do better and more good with this way so 
I just um, went with the flow, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. In music, you know, you've written a lot of songs, a lot of great songs. Uh, sailing. Yeah, it was, uh, well, when the whole crew awards started, um, it was the song of the year. The first uh, um, uh, producer we had in L.A. Uh, did our second album. He was going to do a third album, and Sailing was on that, but he didn't really think that would be a good song for the album. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we stuck, you know, C and I stuck to it because we believed in the song. And so we, um, our manager, we talked to the record company, and then the record company decided to get somebody else to produce it. And we got, um, uh, who was it? Uh, some other great um, producer. In fact, I just met him a couple of years ago. Bruce Botnick. Yeah. Um, working with him was just uh, uh, a once in a lifetime experience. That was just a great experience. And he, he actually t he actually walked you through everything. Whereas the other producer would just throw you in there for yourself and whatnot. But he actually um, took the time to to teach us. So, uh, yeah, and sailing was the big, the biggest song in, on that album. And I wrote that for my dad. And my dad taught me so much, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe how much he did in, in his lifetime. Um, I, I don't think I, I've ever done a ten percent of what what he did, but I learned from him. You know, and, uh, I was wanting to write a song about it, and then I went sailing, and the song came to me. I started watching how passionate the, the captain of the ship was, how much he knew, and it reminded about my father how much he knew and how passionate he was about everything he did. So, you know, my father only went to sixth grade, then he had to work to um, feed the family, because uh, I know it was only his, his mom, and then I think he had some brothers and sisters. So, um, amazing story. You know, but, so I, I want you know I wanted to write something for them, and that was my song for him. In speaking of music, and in speaking of all the success that you've had, uh, H and Hoku Hana Hana Awards. Um, knowing that you've won that amount of uh, albums, um, must feel good. You know, and uh, what's been your key to your success in your career? Passion and believing in myself, um, believing what what I do. Um, it took me a while to really in, really like my voice, but then I love singing, love playing music. But I think it's just passion and drives me. You know, it just keeps it keeps burning, and I keep learning, and then. Um, Believing in what I'm doing is real important because uh, I'm reaching out to people. I'm actually being a part of their life, so I don't want to screw it up. I want, you know, I want to give them some good energy and and thoughts and music. And so I think listening, passion, and belief. I think that's what drives me. Grammy nominated in 2006 for the Wild Hawaiian. You know, it's one of your favorite albums that you've done. Um, to be nominated for a Grammy, you know, uh, how, how, how did that feel for you? My wife was my manager. She didn't tell me that she um, uh, she entered me for the Grammys. And then one morning she woke she woke up and she was all excited and said, she says, hey, get up, get up. I said, what's going on? She goes, you, you're nominated for the Grammy. I went, what? So it kind of like took me by surprise. And I was, it was, um, you know, it was, it was exciting, you know. I mean, I have to say it was exciting. I was thrilled about it. I, I was, um, didn't realize how it got on there or why it was on there. Because, you know, there's, I'm not a uh, real Hawaiian, um, I'm pure Hawaiian, but I'm not a Hawaiian artist. I don't know the language or the culture as much as some of these other kids and other um, uh, Hawaiian musicians now do. So I didn't really consider myself a Hawaiian musician. 
but I did a Hawaiian album because everybody was saying, why don't, you know, you're Hawaiian, why don't you do a Hawaiian album? I said, I don't understand it. You know, I, I didn't grow up in a time period when that was allowed. You know, I was, um, I grew up in an era where you couldn't name your kid. You couldn't give him a, a Hawaiian first name. Um, Hawaiian language was, was, um, was taboo in school if you even spoke it. So after um, 67, I think, everything changed. And then the ki kids and these guys wanted to know more about it, but I was all in a different world at the time. So, so for me, that was a, a real big uh, accomplishment for me to, to do a Hawaiian album. And I said, if I'm gonna do it, I gotta do it my way and how the music I, I play. So it's more rock uh, alternative. Pick songs that I grew up, um, I understood and grew up singing in church. So a lot of those songs were what I learned in church. So it meant a lot to me. Um, you know, it was controversial. Um, you know, not the, the real traditionalists were a little disturbed that, you know, you know, that, that just helped. I think all of that helps you move forward, you know. So, okay, I, I tried my best. I did my best. That's all I could do. Um, so, you know, this is it. I'm going to move on. Next, what's next for me? So, I'm proud of that album, though. It's a great album. Um, it's a great rock album. You've also founded a foundation as well, too. Uh, giving back to the community, giving back to... Uh, a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Henry Capone Foundation support the community through music and the arts and also to give with Aloha. That little line allows us to give to other organizations that we believe in, that we've uh, worked with, and that we've raised money for. And we want to continue that effort to, to support them. You know, like Make-A-Wish, um, March of Dimes, Keiki Okaina. And we started these Kokua festivals when, whenever there were um, disasters around the world. You know, we put these Kokua festivals and raised millions of dollars. So, you know, we're really proud of that. How the foundation got started was um, First Hawaiian Bank wanted to be a part of the music community. So they asked us to come in and if we had any ideas of what to do. So we thought, you know, doing CNK songs is still so popular, even with the young kids. And we said, why don't we do CNK songs with young up and coming artists? And they liked the idea. And it was, a, I mean, it's a great album. Great working with the young um, artists and gave me a, a sense of um, how they think and, and, you know, how they are with their music. Yeah, it was a great experience. So we did that, and um, the, you know, the foundation, our our banker said, you know, why don't you guys start your own foundation? So you, you know, you can know where the money goes, but you can feel good about helping. The great part is that you know I have so many fans that contribute to it, and, and you know, I'm so grateful that you know I've made these connections with people that believe in me and trust me, and and I want them to always believe in me and trust me because. That's who I am, you know. I, um, I want to be up, up and up front with everybody and everything that I do. I'm grateful for that. You know, I have a great man, and my wife is a great uh, manager, and and she organizer and everything she does takes care of my kids, takes care of me, takes care of the business. You know, has a little time for herself, but you know, we're working on that. But she's a, just an amazing woman. Um, I don't know anybody like her. And I've been around a lot of them, management. You've written an award-winning book, children's book, A Beautiful Hawaiian Day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was kind of a, you know, I met a friend. His wife was an um, artist, and she's beautiful, colorful pictures. She, she's an excellent artist. And, uh, you know, we talk about doing, doing this book together. So... So I started talking, and, and I put my kids in there, my um, two kids from my first marriage, Momi and Kaleo. And it's really a, a you know, the story about King Kamehameha and um, his youth when he was growing up. 
and that uh, my daughter got to meet him through a shell um, and spend some time with him in another world, another life, and get to know him and and then uh, realize that you know she, she missed her mom and dad and wanted to come home, so the shell brought her back home. But it's, it's a cute little story and, and it's simple. Um, uh, I don't know. And, and it's, uh, yeah, it's just simple and, and, and I love it, you know. And the, and the pictures are just amazing. You know? So, yeah. I wrote another one with Rap Avenger. Uh, it wasn't a book, it was a, um, it was a recording called The uh, Dreamer Boy. This is about a boy who thinks nobody likes him, leaves home, gets caught in the storm and ends up in this magical music land, learns about life, learns that people do love him, learns that, and, um, and then he, they send him home and, you know, realizes that uh, his, his family does love him and his friends do love him. So, you know, I love those kind of stories, you know, all positive. I wrote that with Rap Levenger, and Rap was a, he's a genius, you know, he's a comedian, and uh, we got together, I gave him a couple songs, he wrote the script for it, and then I gave him a couple more songs, in about four or five days, we're, it was done, you know, it was just recording us after that, so, but yeah, that was a great experience, Rap was an amazing guy. Present goals, you know, you're still performing at Dukes on Sunday, you're still touring, as far as your future goals, continue doing what I do. I finally understand more. You know, that's what I'm, what I'm doing, and why I'm here. And I want to continue that, and just continue making the world a better place. I play at Dukes. I've been there 27 years. People come from all over the world. They plan their vacation around being there. And some, you know, I have people from Canada that stay here for maybe three to five months and they come every Sunday, every Saturday, every Sunday, they're there, you know, it's amazing. But, and then I play at, uh, you know, Hawaiian, uh, Hawaiian Village, Hilton Hawaiian Village. It's a different vibe, you know. Everybody wants, you know, everybody that tried to hire me wanted to get the Dukes thing, you know. Whoa, we want that, we want that. I said, Dukes is Dukes, you know, you can't have Dukes. I got Diamond Head and Palm Trees, Waikiki Beach. You know, there's no other place like it. Right. And and you can't, I can't do that indoors, and I can't do that at another beach. It's just not the same. So, I try to design things for that location. So the Hilton, I I made it more of an acoustic thing. Same songs, but more acoustic. Um, Kona. It's kind of like it's kind of like a Dukes, but uh, uh, I just play solo. Uh, Waikoloa is kind of like um, kind of like uh, Hilton Hawaiian Village, but and I play solo. But it's out it's outdoors. You know, every place I play nowadays is mostly outdoors, especially here. And in Maui, I play at Dukes in Maui, and you know, it's just fun. It's a, instead of them coming to me, to Dukes or Hilton, you know, I just go to them and, and give them, you know, a taste of my, my aloha, my music, so. Dukes on Sunday, huh? Dukes on Sunday, it's a lot of fun, so. And it's live online uh, on my website, uh, my uh, Facebook, every Sunday from five, from five to six Hawaii time. Mm -hmm. And it, it reaches all over the world, you know. I mean, last last Sunday, the biggest hit we had, you know. But it keeps growing, you know. So it's a lot of fun to be able to reach out to to the world through um, the internet, you know. So touching a lot of people. As far as your legacy, you know, what what kind of a legacy do you want to leave back? Just so I was a good guy, you know. Uh, I did, I did people good, you know, I did myself good, I did my family good, I did my wife good, um, that's, that's all that really matters to me, you know, that I, it's 
spent my time doing something good on this planet. The tour of life. What do you enjoy about it? Getting to meet my fans out out there across the beyond the reef, and getting to uh, play for them live. You know, yeah, it's a really uh, it's a great experience for me and for them. They get all excited, and you know, I'm, I get all excited by. The hard part, I always say, is getting there, you know. Mm -hmm. Getting on stage and playing, that's the easy part. Getting there is the hard part. But I still love it. I've been touring for over 40, 45 years, 40 years. My family always travels with me. A good experience for my kids. Family means a lot to me. You know? So I, my, my wife and kids mean a lot to me. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be the same without them. Favorite place you've toured or performed? Maui Arts and Cultural Center uh, in Arizona at the MIM. And then, and then I did a big concert with CN, CNK with them um, in Texas, eighty-seven thousand people, and it was Peter Frampton, Santana, Gary Wright, um, and America, CNK, and everybody was on the top ten. And the promoter didn't know who was going to be number one, the featured act. And the day of, uh, Peter Frampton went number one. So it was exciting. You know, they had a runner for each each um, RV. They flew us in by helicopter because the traffic was too long. And put us up. I mean, we were going, wow, we finally made it. <laughs> but the next day, we had to go back to California to our club, um, the restaurant we were playing at. And so it was a wake-up call. You know, but it was fun. We played, the, we played some big places, opened for some big uh, names and... Um, it was really a good um, uh, experience. If you had to pick three songs that have been your favorite, whether it would be Good Times Together, Sailing, or Friends, uh, which one would it be? Sailing, because I wrote it for my dad. Friends, because I wrote it for my friends. Every song has a different meaning for me. You know, Highway in the Sun is... Um, a lot of people's favorite and one of my favorites. Um, and then some of the new stuff I've been writing is my favorite. It's not as popular as the CNK stuff is because it's a whole different time. But um, and I wrote a song from my, I write a lot of songs from my wife. Um, she's just uh, amazing. She's very inspiring. Um, but yeah, I think I think from from the from the past, the old school days, friends and sailing is going to be my favorites. You've won 18 Ahoku Hano Hano Awards. You've made 30 albums. Um, we're currently in a studio right now. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, are you working on any new albums coming up? Yeah, I'm working on two projects. One of all classic songs. You know, I kind of like got to the point where I think you know, I, I want to reset myself and and go back and and and, and reimagine the old songs that that uh, inspired me to be who I am and do the work that I do so I'm doing some some real classic songs I've been writing a lot lately so um, so I'm working on that as well but, uh, you know I'm I always move forward. I always try to move forward, you know. So, you know, I, I got to the point where I, I was so torn by what is going on in the world nowadays, you know. It's not the, it's not the world I grew up in, mm -hmm. so I had to try to understand it, you know. And in the past year, year and a half, I, you know, with all this stuff going on the, uh, in, the, in America, I just, um, it, for, at, at a point, it got to me, you know, and then I went, no, you know, I got to try to understand it and not let it get the best of me. So, so it took me maybe about a year to really start to figure out, now I can let, now I can figure out what, what I want to write. Mm -hmm. So, I've been really writing about the things I love, you know, mm -hmm. the way life was and the way life should be, you know. And I, I think that's what people want. I don't want them to, to forget that um, 
they grew up in a, in a whole different world that was um, that was way different from what it is now. Everybody kind of gets a message and carries it, and then little by little, maybe it'll make a big difference. Since you've been involved with music for such a quiet time, uh, do you feel there's been any changes throughout the years with music? Oh yeah, there's been a lot of changes, you know. It went from, you know, back in the, the 60s, it was, you know, jazz was big, then Hendrix came in, then 70s, you have all these other great artists that came in, 80s have changed, 90s have changed, 2000s have changed, now it's just like, so programmed, you know, because of technology. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do it at home, but you get all the same sounds, arrangements, and and a different person might sing, but they sound the same, you know, so. For me, it's just hard, hard for me to say, oh, that's um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Oh, that's Jimi Hendrix, you know. That was easy, mm -hmm. you know, because they had their own style. Uh, it wasn't programmed by other people or anything, so. So it's different, it's totally different. And, you know, I, I want to try and fit in somehow, but not not give give up my uh, integrity of, of how I do music, and, but still not be old fashioned, you know? I want to be, bring the old and the new together. You know, I always wanted to be, um, I always wanted to see um, uh, visitors and locals coming together. You know, and I've created that. You know, when I look at out at, at Dukes and, and everywhere I play, you know, there's always locals and there's always visitors or or mainlanders or foreigners, and you know, I realize you know that's what I've always wanted to do, and that they got along. It's important uh, for me that you know I create the space for them, this happy place for them, so that they can enjoy each other. You know, realize that you know it ain't so bad. You know, <laughs> as long as we're here, <laughs> right. having a good time. Right. So, take them away from their misery. Take them away from the world that's trying to find its its place, and and build our own world, our own positive world. You know, I created this plaque called Henry Capone's Positive World, uh, and it's all about love, all about music all about family, friends, and it just, different lines from some of my songs that express my feelings, you know? And I put it on a little plaque, and I've been selling it, and it, you know, it's been uh, it's selling really well. But it's just, you know, I'm not the type of person to sell myself or sell things, but, you know, it's come, come to the point now where, you know, it's not so bad to, to share things with people, you know, instead of selling it, you know, I'm more or less just with more or less sharing it. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy into it. But if it moves you, you know, it's, it can't hurt you. It's, um, because it's, that's not who I am. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was fun to go back into my mind and my past and come back here. All right. All right. All right. <laughs>